This is Mrs. Winstead, and we're taking a look at page three of the Waves Notes. This starts with labeling waves at the top, and so you can see this image is in your notes, along with a list of seven things that we need to do with this image. Uh, the first thing is going to be to label all the crests on the graph. If you look back at your definition for that, the crests are the top points of the graph. So we actually have three of them on this one. We have one here here and also here. So those are your three crests. Make sure you label those. The second thing we need to do is label the troughs, which are the bottom of the graph. So we've got three also here, here, and here. So those are your troughs. The next thing that we need to do is use red to label one cycle on the graph. If you don't have a red pencil or pen or marker, you can just darken it with your pen or pencil. So I'm going to use red here. And a cycle is um, one complete wave on here before it repeats. So a cycle, remember, is a repetitive type of motion. So we just want to label the wave until it starts to repeat itself. It actually starts at zero. And you can see it goes up to a crest and down to a trough and then back up to zero. Now, if we were to keep going, then that would be repeating it because that's the second wave here. And then this one's the third wave here. So we're just going to label the first one. And I'm doing this freehand, so it might be kind of funky. There we go. So there is one cycle right there. The next thing that we need to do is find the period for the graph. That's the amount of time that it takes for one cycle to be completed. So I'm actually going to mark the end of that cycle in red so we can see it really clearly. And our number is right here. The period for this is two. And that is two seconds because we've been given a measurement here at the bottom. So that answers number four. For number five, we need to consider how many waves have gone by when we get to the one second mark. Well, you can see it's not even a complete wave. This is actually half of a wave that we have. So our frequency is going to be 0 0.5 hertz. And we'll look at another way to find the frequency in the next video. So you can check that out. The next thing we need to do is use blue to label the amplitude. The amplitude is how far above or below equilibrium the graph goes. And we'll label equilibrium and amplitudes on uh, the next few pages here. But I'm going to label the equilibrium line on here in green. It's the zero line. It was going to be in green. So let's try that. So that's our zero line. And then the amplitude is going to go from the zero line to the top of this crest. So just change that to blue. Okay, let me grab another line here. All right. So we want to we want to label from the equilibrium line here to the top. That's your amplitude. You can also have an amplitude from the equilibrium line to the trough. So those are both examples of an amplitude. Our amplitude is going to be the absolute value of how much disturbance there is. So this goes up to four. So that's our amplitude. And it is four centimeters because we were given a measurement. So that's how we are going to label this graph. Moving along, we take a look at the definition of a transverse wave. In a transverse wave, the particles move perpendicular to the direction in which the waves move. That means the wave will go side to side, but the particles move up and down. So you see crests and troughs as those particles move. And of course, it's labeled all those things. We have a crest here. So crest, top of the graph, trough, it's the bottom. This right here is the distance between two crests. That is one wavelength. We talked about this here, the equilibrium line on the last slide. We also talked about the amplitude. So the amplitude is how far it's disturbed from the equilibrium line, and that's the line down the middle. The next type of wave is the longitudinal wave, and in a longitudinal wave, the particles move side to side, 
and so does the wave, or the particles move up and down, and so does the wave, they move parallel. A longitudinal wave still has a wavelength that we can identify, but it does not have crusts and troughs. Instead, it has regions that are really pressed together, which are compressions, and regions that are really stretched out, which are rarefactions. Standing waves occur anytime you have a wave trapped between two boundaries. So if you're holding a rubber band and stretching it out, or if you're holding a rope stretched out between two people, um, when you have waves trapped between the boundaries, even if you have a good transverse wave going, you're going to see a crest and a trough at the same time. It almost looks like you have more than one rope or more than one rubber band there. So it's kind of interesting. Um, they have two different regions. One is where you don't see any wave at all. It looks like it's just standing still. It's called the node. And then there's the place where you see both a crest and a trough at the same time. That's called the antinode. We're going to label the nodes and antinodes here. So you can see these are the regions where the wave's not moving much. These are the regions where the waves are moving a whole bunch. So on this side, we have our nodes. On the other side, we have our antinodes. Last thing is moving waves. When you don't have a wave trapped between two boundaries, say you've got one person um, holding a rope that's tied off to a, a pole or somebody else is holding the other end, um, that allows the crest and the trough to be seen separately because the wave is actually able to move. It's not stuck between the two boundaries. So those are our notes for today. Check them out. Good luck. Thanks.